Um, uh, hello, everybody. I'm very proud to participate to this uh, webinar and whose the topic is uh, for ACL reconstruction using adjustable suspensory fixation and especially with inside out uh, technique. Um, I would like first to uh, thank the two company uh, SBM, which uh, um, uh, made, made the pull up uh, device and uh, special uh, uh, thanks for Hospital Innovation, uh, uh, which is very implicated in uh, education and uh, science. Thank you uh, both. Uh, who I am? Uh, I'm Philippe Colombe, medical, medical doctor. I'm an uh, exclusive knee surgeon working in uh, uh, Bordeaux Merignac Sport Medicine Center in the southwest part of France. Uh, in, in our center, we perform 1,800 ACL reconstruction a year, which is uh, a big number. Uh, I think it's one of the biggest uh, around the world. We are six uh, knee surgeons in our center. My personal experience in ACL reconstruction is more than 6,000. ACL in my whole career, around uh, 1,500 ACL using the pull-up. I'm a past president of the French Astrophysics Society and member of the ACL study group. Uh, I uh, wrote uh, and read uh, 18 research items uh, uh, with uh, 73 uh, mainland references. Uh, uh, I had uh, close to 2,000 uh, citations in different uh, uh, paper uh, in uh, all this uh, journal and uh, uh, written 10 book uh, chapters. Um, I would like first to uh, make a, a background on the state of the art for ACL reconstruction, and especially the French experience. What is state of the art, uh, actually? Uh, one of the gold standard is the hamstring the tendon uh, used as a graph uh, with uh, arthroscopic technique. What are the advantages? Uh, the first, reduce the incision, especially uh, at the um, lateral part of the knee, which is provide less pain, of course. Uh, different graph setting uh, with two tendons are vested, gracilis and semi in four, five, or six strand. Uh, different reconstruction are uh, possible with such a graph, uh, single bundle ACL reconstruction, but we can do also double bundle and additional reconstruction, such as MCL and lateral telosis and ALL reconstruction. But there are also disadvantages. The fixation has got no consensus. Uh, that's why there are so many uh, different devices. And I uh, proposed in the past uh, this classification. Um, uh, it's based on the localization of the fixation from the join line in proximal, intermediate, and distal. As you can see in the draw on the uh, right. Uh, the distal cortical fixation are the strongest, but unfortunately that uh, can uh, provide some uh, tunnel enlargement. Uh, also, two tendon harvested uh, can decrease the flexor tendon forces, which is, could be detrimental in some sports activities. Also, the graph diameter is not always matched to the patient morphotype. And we can uh, have some small tendon in the uh, big rugby player, uh, which is uh, an issue uh, we will see uh, later. What about the technique of implantation? On the femoral uh, tunnel, inside out uh, technique is my favorite technique, and avoid uh, an additional incision on the lateral part. But however, it needs to control the tunnel length to save the maximum of bone stock uh, in order to decrease the bungee effect and the windshield fiber, uh, viper, sorry, effect. Uh, and uh, we have to control the graft part within the tibial tunnel um, to get a good healing of the uh, graft. On a tibial side, Two possibilities, the inside out technique, which is very uh, fashion in the moment, uh, it should be uh, a good and best option, but uh, there are some limits. We need uh, a good calculation of the graph length, uh, and uh, if it's wrong, uh, the um, reconstruction could fail. If it's too long, the graph bottom out the socket, so the uh, graph is slack and uh, we have instability. In, uh, on the other hand, if it's too short, 
uh, not enough graft inside the tunnel and very bad healing and uh, also we could have uh, instability. Uh, but also this kind of uh, technique uh, um, uh, need to, to use additional expensive uh, drill uh, such as a flip cutter or uh, of a tarrier for different company and what is not much to the international health cost control. The outside in technique, which is my technique, is much more easy and uh, um, but unfortunately will uh, lose a lot of bone. So in summary, for this most common ACL technique used around the world, we, we use hamstring, semitendinosus and or gracilis, four or six strand graph, inside out femoral tunnel drill, outside in tunnel TDPL tunnel drill, endobutone as femoral fixation and absorbable interference screw on the tibia. That is at the moment the gold standard. But this technique has got uh, many disadvantages. The first one is the use of uh, interference screw on the tibia. It is the weakest point of reconstruction and as you can see in this uh, draw uh, in the chain concept, uh, we will see later, it is a very weak a link. The second, we uh, lost uh, too uh, much collagen and we will see uh, this uh, later. Uh, we have as two tendon, which could lead to a knee flexor deficit. Too much bone remove on the femur uh, and no control of the graft land inside the tunnel. So let's move to a new homogeneous concept the suspensory fixation both sides. First, I have to uh, made a few uh, slides to present uh, this uh, device, the pull-up. Uh, it is adjustable uh, just a cortical fixation system to braided loop pass through a metal plate fitted with two uh, flip threads. Here is, uh, how does it work? The principle, two braided loop are tracted through the tibial tunnel with the platelet in a longitudinal position. And then the platelet outside the uh, uh, external cortex of the femur, you flip the uh, platelet and adjust uh, the system. So everything is locked and you just have to cut the uh, excess of thread. That is the commercial presentation uh, and easy to uh, uh, use. And uh, some word about the uh, mechanical uh, characteristic of such a device. Uh, to date, more than uh, five, uh, 50,000 uh, uh, pull-up devices have been implanted around the world with two uh, different uh, devices, uh, the pull-up and the pull-up XL. Uh, the difference is uh, in the length of the uh, platelet, this is 12 millimeter for the pull-up and 20 for the pull-up XL. The uh, bread are, uh, con consist in ultra high molecular weight uh, polyethylene, a very, very uh, rigid and very solid uh, uh, thread. What are the uh, prerequisites for the medical, uh, kind of mechanical characteristic? That means that uh, what is needed to replace a normal uh, ACL. In terms of uh, physiological tension in extension and uh, at 120 degrees of flexion, you need uh, 120 Newton of uh, load. For jogging, it's a little bit more with uh, 450 Newton. And for uh, physical therapy, it's range from uh, 150 to uh, 750 Newton. That means that the target value for all the system of graph fixation uh, need a strength uh, up to uh, 750 Newton and a displacement less than four millimeter uh, after a cyclic loading or after time in the real condition. That is uh, our tested and the, the Ruptor test uh, shown that uh, um, we are uh, widely above the target value with uh, 832 Newton. And uh, if we compare to other uh, devices, it's a, a very good uh, uh, mechanical uh, property. Regarding the cycling uh, test, 
uh, and there are 500,000 cycling. It's uh, uh, the fatigue rupture. You can see that uh, um, the results are very, very good. And we have a few displacement, and especially in between uh, 1,000 and uh, 600,000 cycling, you see that the sleep page is very, very slow, just one millimeter. That means that it is stiff along the time. That is very important because that is the main difference between uh, the other uh, devices on the market. Different option for ACL reconstruction uh, is uh, mainly regarding the uh, tunnel uh, drilling. Three techniques are possible with such a device. Mine, that is inside our technique, and you will see later the uh, many advantages, but you can also uh, use outside in, depending on uh, your culture and your education in ACL reconstruction. Uh, for example, this uh, uh, outside in is made by one of my friends in uh, uh, Grenoble and he drilled the femoral tunnel from outside in, which is a good option, and use, of course, uh, two pull up XL uh, each side. You can also uh, do uh, all inside technique with very fashion, but uh, technical mandatory. Uh, and I don't recommend you such a technique if you start with uh, suspensory fixation. Now, what is the rationale for 4ST graph? Why? To leave the gracilis and don't just use the semitendinous. Because the collagen, collagen is a gold, uh, um, the white gold is very important. And that is my uh, slide in 1987. As you can see, we tracked the uh, graph and cut the excess of collagen and put it in the garbage. It was a shame. And uh, we all know that uh, it's not easy to find the collagen in the body. And uh, now, because many other surgery use uh, autograph and especially ankle. Uh, stability uh, reconstruction, they use gracilis. It's very important to save one of these tendons. But also, uh, if we watch inside the tibial tunnel, when you use interference screw, you see that the screw occupy a large part of the tibial tunnel and the graft uh, uh, contact with the bone is uh, rather uh, small, uh, which is not very good for the healing. And also with uh, ad adjustable, absorbable, sorry, suspensory uh, uh, interference screw, uh, you can have a cyst, as you can see in this slide, because of the degradation of the uh, product. This concept of suspensory fixation outside in uh, technique is uh, um, uh, shown in this uh, draw. Uh, the inside joint is in between uh, 27 millimeter uh, to uh, 42 millimeter uh, length. I measure this in the past with the navigation technique, and we need a minimum of uh, 20 millimeter inside the buff tunnel. That means that your graph must be ranged from 6.5 centimeter for the kid and the smaller patient to 7.5 uh, for uh, the, the tall patient, which is a rather a small difference. Uh, the advantages of this technique uh, are uh, very uh, interesting. This is a strong graph. We uh, uh, got uh, with the 4ST a uh, big diameter uh, better than we had with the two graphs, semitendinosus and gracilis. The fixation is effective in 100% of cases. That is the, the main advantage of this. Because in the past, with the screw, uh, you were very happy in the majority of patients, but unfortunately, in some uh, patients, you had a very bad feeling, and it was a patient that's an uh, outlier patient, um, and with uh, this kind of fixation, you don't have uh, such a, a patient left uh, on the uh, edge of the road. Uh, no graph lane planification, it's very easy. Uh, it's a, uh, also a performance ancillary that is important to uh, use uh, very tricky things to uh, set up your graph. It is a low cost technique uh, which allows immediate weight bearing and immediate rehabilitation. It is extensive application to many different surgery. 
BT, BTB uh, reconstruction, a PCL, a tibial spine fracture, ACL joint dislocation on the shoulder, ankle surgery, biceps rupture, etc., etc. Regarding the modern ACL anatomy concept, and this wonderful picture was presented in 2012 by my friend Robert Smijelski, that's a ribbon concept. As you can see, the ACL is not round, but flat. And the uh, insertion on the fiber is a, a, a line and a C shape on the tibia. That is important because uh, with uh, such a, a graph, uh, we've got a flat graph and we can mimic the ribbon shape uh, that is uh, better because we are close uh, to the anatomy. But for this setting, don't forget to lock the two extremities of your graph. As you can see, uh, sorry, you, uh, you need to uh, grab with your uh, figure of eight stitch the two extremity. You see? Okay. The rationale for the pull-up device. It's a better contact in between graphic bone. We saw that, especially within the tibial tunnel. It's reduced the uh, graph fixation failure because the IS uh, with short graph lead to a failure. We have better control of the graph lead inside the tunnel because you bottom out your uh, socket and you know exactly uh, how uh, much graph you have in your femoral tunnel. Uh, we also reduce the fixation device inside the tunnel and it's very helpful uh, in, in case of revision. We can drill uh, without any trouble. If you watch inside the tibial tunnel, you see that so the contact in between the graph and the bone is very good and the uh, signal, MRI signal, is very low. That means that the graph is in very good condition of healing. Um, you see the picture on the right showing the uh, graph inside the tibial tunnel. In conclusion, we can uh, say that so this pull-up ACL graph fixation is a reset technique. It's reliable, effective, simple, economic, and transversal. What about the surgical technique? The ACL reconstruction in a modern conception is based on two concepts that have been supported since 12 years. It is a very important thing to consider because ACL reconstruction is not only a fixation, a graph fixation, it's a global concept. And you have to consider these two different things. One is the chain link concept, uh, I will present the, later, and the second one is the a la carte surgery concept. What is a chain link concept? What is uh, shown in this draw? Uh, you see that uh, you can uh, work uh, very hard to increase one of your link, but if you have a very small uh, link of your chain, the global uh, mechanical property of your chain will be the weakest thing. So, in conclusion, we, uh, need, we see that we need to reinforce every link of the chain. That is very important. Don't fight with your technique. Think about the over link. And we have uh, so many links. It's not a limited list, but uh, patient selection is one of the link. Lesion assessment is uh, another one. Laxity measurement, such as the translation and rotation. The type of reconstruction, isolated or combined with a, uh, additional uh, lateral reconstruction. The graph shows, depending on different parameters, uh, the tunnel uh, positioning, the graph fixation, the post-op management, personalization of the uh, physiotherapy, uh, physiotherapy protocol, but also return to sport decision. In this uh, topic, we see that uh, we uh, only consider uh, one of the links, which is a graph fixation system, but don't forget the other one, please. The Alacart surgery concept is based on the meticulous assessment of your patient. What kind of traumatism? Uh, what are the uh, uh, statute of your primary and secondary restraint structure? Uh, uh, what kind of patient is morphotype, the kind of sport, the level of sport also is very important to consider. And you will tell to the patient so that you have got this kind of lesion, 
you play this ball, your morphotype is this one at the level. So the best for you is this kind of uh, reconstruction. That is the future for ACL reconstruction. And from this, I uh, de uh, describe an indication algorithm uh, in the French book called Arthroscopy. I wrote a chapter uh, on this and you, you can see the algorithm. I will describe this here, but it just tell you that uh, it's uh, a very uh, uh, preciously described. Uh, outside in, the principle is uh, to uh, do a blind femoral tunnel and open tibial tunnel in order to insert the graft from the tibia to the femur. Uh, it's an uh, easy technique, uh, I told you, but one of very important point is that uh, in this kind of management, you can save the remnant. And saving the remnant, it's another kind of link for your healing. Uh, you, you can consider that uh, another link in the healing of your graft. You must you save your uh, remnant, more you will have vessel and uh, nerve capture and many things we, uh, can help you uh, to lead to a normal uh, ACL reconstruction. Don't, so that's uh, kind of insertion is very important. If you do all inside, you cannot save the most uh, possibility of uh, remnant. The graft preparation. The graft tech is a very uh, nice thing, not because I've drawn it and I perfect it off, but uh, it's very helpful uh, to set and prepare a flat and very homogeneous graph. You can find the technique uh, on uh, the internet uh, and YouTube with the arthroscopy technique. It's a uh, uh, free access. Uh, so once again, don't forget to lock the two extremity of uh, your uh, semi uh, tendinosis graft. Now we're going to show the movie on this technique, and uh, we'll uh, continue later. So we start by adding sensory fixation to the graft preparation station. When pull up, So you can see that uh, the, the graph is very flat and you have two uh, stitches all along in order to avoid. And this uh, will avoid the uh, joint free to go in between the different
Well, so uh, that's done for the uh, technical uh, point of view. And now we are uh, going to move to the clinical result. What kind of clinical result we uh, can expect from uh, such a technique? Uh, I published this uh, uh, cohort in the AGSM uh, journal, uh, which is the, the chart flow. And the cohort is uh, uh, consists in 104 patients, and uh, we uh, followed 97% of patients, which is very important thing, with a minimum of uh, uh, two years of follow-up. Um, and uh, the uh, percentage of failure uh, is uh, 1.9. It's just under 2% of graph failure, which is very low regarding uh, the literature, which mostly range in between uh, 5% and uh, 10%. Uh, on the IKDC score, global score, A and B is 100% of patients. Uh, as you can see, it's a very uh, pleasant result at uh, two years follow up. Uh, the main return to work is uh, two month point six and return to sport at nine months, close to nine months, which is very common uh, all around the world. Uh, 70, uh, 65% of patients return to the same level. The um, Subjective score, IKDC, and Lysom score, you can see uh, progress during time, and uh, at uh, two years, they are uh, very good. Uh, regarding the knee laxity measure with the GNRB uh, device, which is a very uh, sensible uh, system and very precise system, you see that uh, uh, we uh, reduce uh, uh, widely the uh, laxity of uh, uh, the knee and it, it remains stable with time, as you can see. Uh, that is my personal registry. Uh, it, it consists in uh, much more patient, 1,400 cases, and you can see a majority of uh, 4ST uh, pull-up reconstruction with uh, BTB uh, pull-up uh, around uh, 150 and uh, uh, some ACL and uh, ALL uh, reconstruction that the uh, graph rupture in this uh, uh, large cohort, it's 2.2, uh, 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 single surgeon. And regarding the failure, it's interesting to check this. Uh, this happened uh, within the first three years, 87% in, in within the first three years. And it's a majority of young patients, uh, 83%. Uh, it's a very important thing we uh, are watching uh, in uh, our uh, um, uh, study uh, society, and it's uh, very uh, um, uh, scary in this uh, because it's a young patient. Um, uh, the complications uh, are very, very few, only 0.2%. Uh, complications related to the pull-up, only four cases, among the, the large uh, cohort uh, on the femoral pull-up, one pull-up uh, rupture, post-operative uh, revision the same day, um, probably because uh, it was at the beginning of experience and uh, uh, some uh, technical uh, issue. Uh, and uh, three of them uh, related to uh, the tibial platelet, which was uh, painful on a very thin patient. And we had uh, a long time after to remove that without any trouble regarding the stability of the knee. No thrombosis, no stiffness. It's a very important thing because it's a stiff thing. But if you uh, think about uh, tightening uh, your uh, system close to the extension, you won't have any uh, uh, stiffness of your knee. Uh, Reoperating, uh, uh, except the re-rupture, uh, three uh, cases. Uh, three uh, technical issue on the tibia, one in primary uh, surgery uh, and two in revision. It uh, consists in a flipping of the uh, tibial patellate because the tibial tunnel was uh, oval and uh, 
uh, why? So that's uh, easy. You uh, get this with a, a hook and uh, pull uh, pull it outside the tibial tunnel and put a staple and everything is done. Uh, it's very easy to correct uh, such uh, trouble. But you see, it's only three patients among 1,500. Um, uh, 41 reoperation related to over uh, um, issue, uh, 12 infections, it's uh, under 1% uh, of infection, uh, 18 meniscal uh, lesion, 6 cyclops, and uh, you have one of uh, picture here. You see that the patient uh, got pain and a lack of extension. Uh, and under arthroscopy, I uh, remove the uh, fibrosis. And you see uh, we've got uh, a very wonderful, a beautiful graph with a lot of vessel and uh, perfect healing. Uh, we are also uh, free uh, hematoma and free tibial uh, cyst. That is an example of a TBL cyst, uh, only three among the, the, all the, the cohort. And you see the uh, view, the in, uh, intraarticular view, and a, a, a good graft. And after uh, removing the uh, cyst, uh, I did a bone graft uh, of the tibia, and everything returned to the normal condition. There is some uh, picture uh, about uh, some cases. You see a very good MRI signal, a perfect vascularization of the graph, which is very pleasant with uh, such a technique. Another pictures, and uh, uh, I promise you that it's a very exciting and very interesting technique. Uh, that are the publication uh, reported on this, and you can find on the med line. Uh, some are in uh, free access, but uh, others not. And uh, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Now uh, I'm going to answer uh, to your question. Thank you. This uh, uh, kind of uh, device is uh, um, uh, very uh, uh, well uh, adjusted and uh, the diameter is uh, uh, perfect. We don't have any damaging on the graph. And uh, uh, when you tighten, you don't have any slippage. So the, the, this loop are very effective. And we, we can use for many, many different uh, indications. No, 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 no. Uh, it's a very important question. Uh, the system is based on the uh, Japanese finger trap and don't do any no, because if you do not, you uh, you don't uh, let the, the, the good tension in the figure trap, which is the, the capacity of uh, uh, grabbing the thread. So never do any uh, knot. It, it's not a good uh, option and it, it's uh, uh, contraproductive. Don't do this. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, for pediatric, it's very interesting because um, in pediatric, we need that to save uh, the um, uh, the um, the physis. You have to uh, non implant any hard uh, wear uh, bridging the physis. Instead of you will have uh, deformity uh, in the grown up of the patient. So that's a perfect technique for pediatric. That you uh, can do the same technique with, without any problem. And the loop are uh, perfect because you, you can reduce this to uh, um, five, uh, four millimeters. So it's, uh, it's enough. And uh, as I told you previously, uh, for the, the kids, with uh, uh, six and six point five uh, length graph, it's perfect uh, thing. With the uh, outside in technique, you don't have to to uh, pre uh, calculate anything. It's just for all inside technique, you have to do a calculation. Uh, just it's a simple thing. You uh, set your graph at seven or seven. 
2.5 for the biggest patient and uh, all will be perfect uh, all the time uh, without any calculation. Don't worry about this, but unfortunately, if you do uh, 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 too much uh, long graph, uh, you will have the option to tighten uh, your TBL uh, pull-up uh, under a staple. Many different parameters. We are uh, all of us uh, thinking uh, uh, about this. I think that uh, among the different par parameters involved in uh, this uh, explanation, it's they are uh, uh, the the kids are unbreakable. They don't respect anything. They don't uh, uh, listen to the doctor. Uh, um, uh, uh, condition to return to sport when they, you have to they don't do physiotherapy uh, also uh, they are uh, very uh, exigent in terms of capacity they want to be uh, the number one uh, of the world in our, their sport uh, but also um, uh, the the Probably, I, I don't have any data on this, but probably the collagen is uh, mostly uh, consisting in elastin and it's very uh, elastic. So uh, it's not rigid uh, 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 as we uh, have uh, uh, in the, with the tendon of the, the adult. Uh, so all these different uh, things uh, lead to uh, this uh, rate uh, anormal rate of rupture and we are thinking about this and it's very difficult because uh, we could say that uh, we'd like to increase our technical capacity and a lot of surgeons uh, recommend to do uh, AL additional reconstruction but if you do the maximum and you uh, um, damage uh, surgically the, the knee in a young patient uh, what will you do uh, in the future if something wrong? Uh, but it's difficult. And I think that the, the better option for such a patient is to do prevention. And uh, uh, the Nordic uh, countries, such as Denmark and uh, Sweden, uh, do a lot of uh, prevention program and I think it's widely better instead of uh, increase the uh, surgical aggression. Uh, once again, uh, I don't recommend the all inside technique really. It's uh, passion, but it's not uh, suitable. It's not good for many different things really. And uh, uh, also the uh, publication are not very good regarding the uh, rupture rate. Uh, some uh, reported 13% uh, of graph rupture. So f forget the all inside technique, but uh, for the um, standard technique for ACL and PCL. Um, it is important to stitch all the, the graph because uh, I, I would like to tell this during the video, but this was uh, too short. Uh, um, stitching all the graph uh, make a homogeneous graft and this uh, allowed the joint fluid to go uh, in between the different thread and uh, the healing is supported by uh, one first very important step, which is the synovialization of your graph. And if the graph is not homogeneous, you won't have this uh, synovialization. And if you don't have the first step, you won't have the vessel at the end because the vessel uh, grown up along the, uh, the, the edge of your graph inside the uh, synovial uh, tissue. So uh, it's very important, but uh, I think that uh, we need to use absorbable uh, suture for this because uh, less we will uh, have uh, artificial uh, tissue in the knee, better it will be. The, the problem is, uh, first of all, saving the remnant is the main, main thing you can do because you never uh, could do better than nature. So just uh, save 
must you uh, uh, can. So if you go from the tibia to the femur, you will save the maximum. Why? Because the rupture always uh, happen on the femoral side of your graph. Uh, 99.90, 90, 90, 99% uh, of cases. So if you do all inside technique, you will have to track your uh, tibial uh, graft uh, from the joint to the uh, outside uh, of the knee. So you uh, grab the tissue, they come inside the tunnel and you are unable to track your graft inside. It's very difficult, very difficult, I promise you. So it's better to go from the tibia to the femur uh, in order to save the maximum of uh, tissue. And this is one of very important link of your chain. But using um, uh, pull-up for uh, BTB is a uh, uh, very exciting and tricky thing, uh, but there are rules and uh, different uh, possibility depending on the uh, patella tendon length. So the plug, the question is, was uh, regarding the length of the plug. The plug is 20 millimeter length. Um, but what uh, changes is uh, the tendon length. And uh, if you have a global uh, graft with two centimeter uh, both side of the plug, uh, under 90, 90 centimeter, 90 millimeter, uh, 90 centimeter, that will be perfect, but over this, uh, up to this uh, uh, length, you will have to manage the difference. Well, how you can manage this? You can manage this in uh, extending the length of the femoral tunnel and extending the length of the tibial tunnel. How? If you change your angulation uh, of, of uh, uh, femoral drilling, uh, for example, 15 degrees, much more vertical, you extend your uh, femoral tunnel length uh, with two centimeters. It's very important. Only 15 degrees of variation, you save two centimeter length, which is very important. And on the tibial side, you have to put the hammer, the maximum angulation you can, the, around uh, uh, 70 degrees uh, of uh, 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 angulation and that will provide um, the longer uh, tibial tunnel you can. That means 4.5 centimeter. That's it's very important uh, for the, the first uh, thing. And you know this because after uh, harvesting your uh, graph, you measure it and you know how you will have to do this. And in case it is very, very long, uh, you can put a staple outside the tibial tunnel and tighten your uh, uh, graft uh, uh, under this, sta this staple. The, the uh, platelet, uh, and you flip it, it's very, uh, and you detract very strong on your graft, it's uh, locked on the lateral, uh, um, oh, sorry. Uh, lock on the lateral cortex of your femur, so it's not vertical or horizontal. You don't care. It's a very small thing. You, you uh, cannot feel it. Uh, the patient uh, don't have any idea about uh, what is uh, uh, the, the lateral part of his knee. So uh, um, it's it's not important. What is important is to track very strong on your graph to lock completely your platelet on the tibial uh, on the femoral lateral cortex. Uh, yes, but the rehabilitation protocol is not based on the kind of fixation uh, because uh, the majority of fixation are uh, good enough. But the kind of re-education and the protocol is mainly based on the uh, patient morphotype, level of uh, sport, kind of sport. Uh, that are the, the different parameters of your uh, knee protocol. But in majority, uh, you allow the patient for, uh, full weight bearing, uh, uh, full uh, knee flexion, immediate. You, you, 
because it's very strong. It's not like the screw. It, with some patient with screw, you drive the screw and you see that it's not perfect. It don't uh, sound very good. And uh, you say uh, to the patient, oh, uh, go slowly because you are anxious about your uh, 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 mechanical property of a, a reconstruction. But in that case, it's very strong because you are locked on the uh, cortex of uh, your uh, two bone. So that's not an issue. You can uh, do a very uh, strong and faster rehabilitation protocol. It's a very good advantage of this uh, device. I did ALL reconstruction long time ago, 15 years ago. In that time, nobody was very interested in uh, lateral additional reconstruction. And I did publication on this because at that time, I did the uh, ACL reconstruction navigation system and measure the laxity, the uh, translation, rotation. And uh, the, probably I did too much uh, lateral extraarticular reconstruction. Um, in majority of cases, it was in uh, revision cases. But now it is very, very uh, fashion. And um, some of surgeons do a, a very large percentage of additional uh, ALL reconstruction, uh, some 80% or so, uh, that kind of this. I think this is a no, uh, not a good idea. Uh, bec why? Because if you don't select the good patient, you think that additional something else will uh, uh, lead to a, a better uh, result, but not. That's exactly the chain link concept. You will fight to increase uh, one of your link and you uh, don't think about the other link. Yes, it's interesting to do ALA reconstruction, but with the patient, they have lateral uh, lesion. They have uh, 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 secondary restraint uh, structure lesion, but we are at the moment not able to assess really that kind of uh, uh, lesion because we don't have the tool for that. It's just the uh, clinical testing. It's very different in between surgeons because uh, none of us uh, do the same kind of test. But we need an objective tool to measure the translation and the rotation and make a ratio as I proposed in the past. And from that, we will be able to say this patient uh, really need an additional reconstruction because it's, it's not enough uh, to do a standard uh, reconstruction, uh, example for revision or for high level sport patient because they uh, do a, a lot of constraint on their knee. And in that case, it's not uh, um, uh, the target is, is not the laxity, it's the, the, the load because the patient, example, the rugby player, uh, they had a lot of uh, constraint in, in uh, traumatism and ALL and ACL has got the same orientation and they uh, share the load. So you have two structures uh, to, uh, uh, um, to, to get it to uh, absorb uh, the, the constraint and the high constraint. So it's... Uh, a mechanical point of view is not a biomechanical point of view. It is a, a, a small difference. But, but when we will be able to correctly assess the objective laxity of the knee, that will be better to uh, propose indication for uh, LL reconstruction or lateral tendon disease, which is not exactly the same. Uh, it's a, another discussion. Before that, uh, I did the, the, what I presented, that uh, the state of the art, uh, uh, which is um, probably the gold standard at the moment uh, around the world. 60% um, uh, of surgeons do this. Uh, it is hamstring using uh, hamstring graft using gracilis and semitendinosis with uh, suspensory fixation, not adjustable, suspensory fixation, uh, like an uh, button on the femur and the screw on the tibia. That's, uh, that is uh, the, the standard, international standard. That's what I did uh, uh, 10 years ago. But uh, in that case, 
I was very pleased because my result was good, but but uh, I, I told this be, before, but uh, I have outliers patient, that's uh, the patient with failure. And I, I was thinking uh, how I can uh, improve this, what uh, this patient failed. Of course, some of them have got new traumatism, but uh, in some patients, I, I won't have a good uh, feeling uh, uh, at time of surgery. Uh, for example, the, the, the female patient with a soft bone on the tibia, you drive the screw, even though it is a big screw, you don't have a very good feeling. And the sound, the, the, the screw doesn't sound very well because it gra doesn't grab the graph. So uh, I, I, won't, uh, I wasn't pleased with uh, this kind of uh, patient. And I was thinking how to improve and to save this outlayer by outlayer patient. And uh, uh, with the suspensory fixation of the sap, I uh, control 100% of cases regarding the graph fixation. This, that don't mean that I don't have failure, but I reduce uh, consistently uh, the graph failure probably to uh, 4% to 2%. That is uh, very uh, uh, big uh, regarding the number of patients.